Cool. Well, well, maybe why don't you first uh, each introduce yourself and uh, your role in the the project? Um, yeah. Let's go with it. Uh, my name is Milton Lim. I am the solo performer for this iteration of the project, uh, artist in residence with Theatre Conspiracy, and a collaborator. I'm Tim Carlson. I run Theatre Conspiracy, and I'm the writer producer on the project. I'm Jeremy Waller. I'm the director of Foreigner. I'm David Msiha, collaborator and uh, visual sound design. I'm Kathleen Flaherty, I'm the dramaturg on the project and I work with uh, Playwrights Theatre Centre in conjunction with Foreign Radical Project. Uh, this, this has took a lot of work to put together. Um, maybe just briefly, uh, can you guys tell us how, how it came together and how it got to where, where it is now? Foreign Radical kicked off about two years ago uh, when I met Ron Debert, who runs the Citizen Lab at uh, the University of Toronto. He's a renowned expert and researcher in the area of cyber surveillance, internet uh, censorship, and those kind of issues. Pretty well known, the author of uh, a book called uh, The Black Code. And in talking to him, this was just before, maybe about six months before the Snowden revelations, I got really interested in this subject matter and thought it'd be a great documentary piece that would follow up on extraction. I did lots of research through him, and then, of course, when the Snowden revelations came out, um, there was suddenly the research um, realm just exploded. Mm -hmm. um, and there was so much that uh, ground to cover that uh, we thought one focus is how do we make all of these really heady issues connect with people? Mm -hmm. And what we came up with is we wanted to make it exceptionally personal and having people be um, participate in the show was the way to do that. And once we looked at ways to participate, the, the idea of gameplay uh, became an essential feature. Yeah, so it's like, it's like a game show. You got uh, Milton is, is the, uh, the game host, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about um, sort of what's, uh, when you're taking people through this process or through the, through the game, what you're trying to, to pull out of them? In many ways, I'm facilitating uh, the type of uh, space that we are going into in which uh, it's open enough and vulnerable enough in which we can be honest to uh, expand upon all those heady ideas and bring it to a personal level. So uh, we played around a lot with the idea of me being a host. Uh, a lot of people have brought up the idea of um, character integration. But for the most part, I think um, just introducing that sense of play into the room, in, which is uh, quite conducive to a game element. How did you guys decide to interrogate people? How did that, uh, how did that aspect of the game come into play? It came uh, through a long, uh, kind of a long process. Uh, we the, the game, the, the version, this version is one of many. Um, what we were in terms of the game, um, and uh, without any technology at all, we were able to have a, a very exciting uh, situation for audiences to come through. But we wanted to branch off and create uh, different experiences for two groups um, that would be more experiential than uh, directly gameplay. Well, it, it is a game, essentially, that is the format. What's really interesting, it, uh, this comes up again and again, that the play, the story of the play, is really the story of each group that plays in yeah. each show. Yeah. That becomes the story. That's been interesting because then when it comes into the interrogation part, it makes that exper experience a lot more intimate. Overall, uh, one of the goals was to test technologies that we would like to develop further for future iterations of the show moving forward. But in this particular iteration, the technologies have served three main um, layers, I would say. The first one being, uh, from a pure design point of view, an environmental 
uh, aspect that helps to situate people in specific environments, specific headspace and specific emotional space as much as we could. The second level was playing with the documentary aspect in terms of integrating actually documentary into the show itself and having it play in both ways of people being in a documentary format but also sometimes they are be being observant of a documentary. And then the third aspect was, since the show is a lot about privacy and surveillance, was how to play with that technology and try to integrate it. So we had a few different ideas and we've played with a few different aspects of integrating surveillance-like technology into the show itself and have it affect the experience of the audience and affect the gameplay and affect the whole thing. I took part in one show. Actually, my experience is after the the show, I, I, I feel it's, it's also more about the self. It's, like a, it's really a self-discovery. You encounter yourself in a very like a, yeah, unexpected way. If we hear of all this uh, like a, a documentary, all this con conceptual, like all this technology, all these layers, like at the, at the theater or storytelling, you know, the fundamental, I think, uh, I believe is still the, the same. So mm -hmm. what, what's the fundamental? Thing, like you want to achieve? We think about uh, privacy as we think about it a lot more these days because of what's in the news and because of technology and uh, maybe that's putting up some walls um, making us really guarded uh, for really good reasons um, and what art can do, what uh, we can do in this show is really connect uh, people with their own attitudes. Um, what is fundamental to protect and what is we should be allowed to say and express. And I think the various scenes in this show help people uh, connect to those fundamental questions. I'd actually add to Tim's, with regard to your point about the, the show on the surfaces about issues of privacy and surveillance, and you encounter yourself, and it, it's pretty interesting because fundamentally all the issues surrounding privacy and surveillance are just about the self, are about what are things about yourself that you think others should or should not know, and are you doing that or not, and also why. Do you really care that, that you should have some things that are not public and are not surveyed or not? And it was interesting that people were, um, one of the comments that came up were that they started feeling that things that they often share about themselves online on daily basis and they know that thousands if not more people can see it, when they were in an intimate space and suddenly being asked that question personally and in front of few other people, they felt a lot more guarded about it and it made them think just about what's their attitude actually towards uh, their information in, in cyberspace. Yeah, there's a really fascinating line uh, in the piece when the interrogation starts and they sit down expecting to be interrogated in a similar manner to the rest of the piece, but they're actually invited to open up at that mm. point fully and freely in a sense. Um, and there's a, it's, it's fascinating to come into privacy and security and, and, what come out, and to see what come out of it be uh, sharing mm -hmm. and sort of a greater understanding of each other and that is what art can do. It's a fascinating thing to discover. Perhaps you know, part of it is that um, we have been looking at these issues from all points of view of all parts of the world. We've been looking at pictures of graffiti on the walls in Egypt and we've been f uh, tracing who uh, owns uh, cyber surveillance gear that they're selling to other countries and all of the uh, those issues but when it came down to making uh, a personal individual journey in each uh, for each person that information just feeds their own story so we may be using some of those images for further or some of those ideas for in our further iterations of this work, but at the moment, um, they, they're just fuel for us to know that the whole world is interested in this material. We're working towards a, um, a premiere at the Colch in April of 2015, 
and in that environment we'll probably have about three times as much space as we've had here in the uh, containers. So uh, more opportunities for different environments. Um, but this experiment has really uh, served the development of the piece here at York Continent. There's also a fascinating, I mean, I think this next iteration of the culture is definitely to maximize what Tim's talking about, but I think we are all interested to, it's a matter of scale, and if we were working on a, a larger scale with a, a much larger budget and um, with greater facilities and technology at our, um, at our convenience, then I think you know we all agree that it would be possible to have a large audience that would have a, same, a similar degree of intimacy, but of course it would change dramatically. Mm -hmm. But it could get to an incredible... I mean, Tim you know, was, was mentioning the other night, talking the other night, that uh, this to think of it as a Rubik's Cube and that this piece is... Uh, like a Rubik's Cube is used as a metaphor in the piece um, for possible solutions to things. And, and things but he was talking about it as, as this piece being one of the cubes in a Rubik's Cube and that the piece could eventually become an entire Rubik's Cube in one thing and I think that's that's a fascinating mm. fascinating concept mm. yeah. so which could have m more than 100 people it could be quite massive right. in a sense so it's not ideal number yet well, in, in tr there's an ideal number for what uh, Tim and Milton are talking about, absolutely, in this kind of iteration. And we don't know, and uh, that's speculating into the mm. into madness. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like whether which we are given to do. No, which we are given to do at all. <laughs> but it's basically like whether, whether uh, even in a larger space with much larger audience, we're exploring the possibilities of technology assisting and allowing mm -hmm. to move between the two, the individual and yeah. the intimate experience, and then to blow it up to mm -hmm. the global and the larger experience. So with more space, there may be opportunities to play that, like Jeremy's saying, treat a specific room and a specific experience like a block in the Rubik's mm -hmm. Cube, and the whole space being a Rubik's Cube, and being able to right. change that. And of course, there's the online version. Right. Yeah. <laughs> For and Radical, the internet game. <laughs> <laughs> or the party game. Or the party game, the board game. Yeah, the board game that. and party game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah there, and there's something interesting too that's happened here in a way with this culture of the festival uh, that this is an environment for sharing and for people to come together in a very unique way that you wouldn't get at a party or any right, kind of right. situation. And there's been sort of a, there's been hints of sort of community moments in a way out here. And uh, you know, another aspect that you could e easily imaginable would be to have some sort of a social environment that is happening outside of this environment um, that could then co kind of co-feed into it. So you know, the, the, the party, and somebody, one audience member was saying, man, you should have a bar that the audience walks into ever so they can talk about each other's stories. The ice is all broken, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it, it, lots of possibilities. Yeah. 